Get daily updates directly to your inbox plus subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. Could not subscribe. Try again later in valid email. West Brom boss Alan Pardue spoke with the national and local press before Albion's trip to Everton. This weekend, the magnitude of the match can't be underestimated. And Albion had there in a positive mood after two wins in two. The Toffees, meanwhile, haven't won any of their last six, including a draw at the Hawthorns, but are boosted by the arrival of Theo Walcott, who signed from Arsenal this week. There was much to discuss. As always, the untimely death of the great Cyril Regis, the latest on the transfer front, his relationship with Big Sam and the latest team news. Read on to see what Pardue had to say on an array of different subjects. On J. We're guided by the FA who don't want us to comment in way, shape or form. Unfortunately I can't give you any update or opinion on that. Video loading video unavailable click to play tap to play the video will start in 8 cancel play now. On Cyril. What's come out since the sad passing of him has been the love for him. I think that's been genuine. You see that fellow players and people who have been around him. I've come into contact with him many times. Once when he was a young player at Hayes I played against him. I was only a young boy so I followed his career. He broke in, like myself, through the non-league system. When players do that you've got a kinship with them. Particularly when they do so great. He was a brilliant player. If you wanted to mold a player from the past who would be perfect for today's game and generation. It would be Cyril. He could play the number 9 right now for this football team. No doubt, poor Solomon would be under massive pressure. But he was a real gent and I think that's what has come through. That's where the feeling is more so. Of course it was a great career. But also a real gentleman in the game. Tributes. We're obviously going to have a minute's applause at Everton. Our home game we're going to make a big effort for him, which hopefully will be fitting for the legacy he leaves behind. Wind changed mood. The mood now is very different than when we went to Exeter when we hadn't won a game. That cup game might turn out to be very important to us. We got a victory and did it with some comfort. That was probably the reason we saw the game out against Brighton so comfortably. I would not have expected that. Not to have won for so long. Our game management in the last 15 minutes was exceedingly good. Bit like a team that had been on a winning run if you had come just to watch that period of the game. We scored from two set plays but our attacking play was good. It's still an area we need to improve on. But the team is functioning much better. The opposition are beginning to see us as more of a threat. Well take that to Everton. So the feeling is good. One win from safety, psychological boost. Yes but it's not something that's easily done. We've got to go and win at Everton to do that and other games go our way. I still think our home games will determine whether this club will remain a place club. Our fans need to focus on every home game. Away games, if someone said would you take a point at Everton? I would because it's a tough game. And they are particularly difficult at home. They're in a tricky period right now. But I know Sam well enough to know they would have worked hard this week on making sure things are right. He's gone again in the transfer market and signed a very good player to add to the player he got last week. So it's a tough call for us. But that we go there in a good place in a good situation. Image. P.A. Walcott A. Bargain. I don't know about that. It's very difficult with the prices now to gauge what's good value. We live in a hyperinflated world because of the TV money received by the football clubs. Therefore transfers and wages are going way out if kilt with real life. I think we're all losing the plot with the figures. It's just becoming, oh okay, and not even reacting to things anymore. Obviously Sanchez looks like he's going to go, which is going to break the record somewhere along the line in that deal. This is the market we're in. The only way Theo will be a bargain for Everton is if he scores goals. But the likelihood is he will. 
20 thirtieths of a meter for Sanchez. I think it's more the personal situation. The big issue that sometimes we try to hide under the bed in terms of agency fees and everything else that goes in that type of deal. It'll still be very expensive whether it's in this window or the summer. It's just where that money goes. Evans update. None. Worrying you dragging on. OR suit you. Double edged sword. Suppose you could word it like that. From my point of view there's been no bid so there's nothing to discuss. We have scenarios that are going to time out if we don't get a bid for Johnny that's acceptable for Johnny and for us. Remember that's a two-way street that won. Johnny has and he seen me this week so I'm in the dark a little bit. I'm not bothered about seeing him. We haven't had a bid. So in terms of our plans to use that money, if it was to come in the door, that time is ticking away. And that concerns me a little bit more. Evans, admiration. Yes you have. I don't think that's the case with all those players who have been aligned with bigger clubs. But you certainly can't put it at his door. But he's been terrific in and around the training ground and everything. He has a core mentality about this thing. Other players I've experienced in the past. Their emotions get the better of them. You have to remind them. You're letting the team down but I've never had to do that with Johnny. So he does deserve a pat on the back for the character that is. Ali Gabr. On the transfer front we're making inquiries on a number of players. Most of it is being taken by Nicky Hammond. That's his job. So I don't always know what he's doing. I just want to know what's coming in the door and going out the door. In terms of names. I'm not going to confirm anything because I don't want to jeopardize the other club or the player. So like all managers, I'll sit firmly on this little fence I'm on. Pardu v Allardyce, reassuring. We've had run-ins and words in the past but that we genuinely respect each other. We do a job in a different way. I could never do what he does and he could never do what I do. We bring a different personality and character to management. He's always had success and will continue to have so. Struggling a bit, drag them in. That really is on our agenda. To drag a few in. We can only do that by winning games. There's no chance of Everton getting dragged into it if they beat us. Every time we come up against a team not in that echelon at the top, and let's put Burnley in there. Hats off to them, everybody else will be under pressure. Team News only the two guys who had the head clash last weekend. Both of those we've had to monitor and go through all the procedures that have to happen in a head. Injury. We're pretty confident they'll be okay but we'll find out tomorrow. Troy Deeney. Caliber. That caliber of player can only come if you have the finance to do it. I think it's well documented that we don't really have any finance to do anything regarding a player of that stature unless there's a transfer out. At the moment, they're ISNT. All that speculation is about what's the market doing. Theo, Walcott, can we do that? No, that goes to Everton, and it's how you react. Right up to the last two days, sometimes the last hours. We don't want to be in a position going into those last three days in that equation. When the better options have already gone and you're left with options that don't work. Enjoy period. Some clubs it's more difficult than others because the onus is on the manager. Here, I've put all the onus on Nicky Hammond and I'm enjoying seeing him suffer.